Jason Day is back. After a few years in the golfing wilderness, he's changed his swing with his new coach, Chris Como. One, to help his back, and two, to help his performance. Now, Jason struggled for a few years with some injuries to his back that led him unable to practice for a long period and really unable to play the game at his full potential. So what we're gonna do is look at a few things that he's changed in his swing and a few of his fundamentals that allows him to be one of the best players in the world. So if we look at setup from down the line, he's got a very sort of traditional setup. Those arms hang nicely below his shoulders, really good anatomically. He's got a nice rounded spine, neutral posture, none of this bolt upright stuff that we used to see little bit of knee flexion there and then from face on what we'll see nice neutral grip a narrower stance than probably he would have had in the past he was a little bit wider which will enable him to rotate more around his hips which we'll talk about which caused a little bit of his injuries in the past so let's get these lines off and let's have a look at his swing so we'll draw a line on his butt to start off with we'll look from down the line so really neutral posture what Jason has admittedly worked on is working around the ball and socket joint of the hip in the backswing, specifically that right hip. So before what we used to see with Jason is not a lot of rotation through the hips and a lot of torsion through the spine. It was really sort of hold, hold the hips off, rotate the spine, something that Jim McLean popularized in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s, that X factor stretch. The idea that we get a stretch between the upper and lower body that creates power. In reality, it caused a few issues for Jason. So enable him to move around the ball and socket joint of the hip rather than putting strain through the spine has alleviated some of that back pain, which we'll talk a little bit more in detail as we run through the swing. So it's set up, like I said, nice clean setup. We'll take the club back just a halfway back. Those hands, what I like to see is almost like a little corridor. Oh, I don't know why that line went off there. So if we look at the hands here, what you'll see is those hands will travel pretty much in that little corridor. Like, look how beautiful that takeaway is. So hands stay in that corridor. The butt end of the club is going to be pointing at the belly button. As you can see there, it's a great sort of checkpoint. And that right hip is working back more than it used to. Whereas before, he'd be very, that belt buckle would still be pointing at the ball. Whereas now he's letting that hip rotate. We'll see from face on. Let's watch. You'll see that hip pocket just start to move. There you go. See that hip pocket just move back there. Whereas before, you'd see a really stable hip motion, which I think put a lot of strain through his lower spine so nice wide hands again that that butt of the clubs pointing at his belly button it's a really good checkpoint for anybody watching at home and then we'll start to again he'll work trying to bring that you can see watch that watch that right hip pocket if you watch that hip pocket watch how it's moving back you see that just moving back that was not a move that jason really did before it was very sort of stable that those hips wouldn't rotate a lot look at that width so we look from face on let's get rid of those lines actually watch that hip start going back more get into the same position you'll see that that knee is probably a little bit more towards the ball than it's been in the past which is again is allowing that hip and um, lower spine to rotate a little bit more getting that belly button or belt buckle facing more towards the camera whereas like I said before he was very much face on so you've got nice nice wide so it's very a la sort of tiger not a lot of wrist set as you'll see you know some guys like Adam Scott or your more traditional guys that like sort of lead better would coach it'd be more vertical here but it allows him to stretch in the in the downswing which we'll talk about so let's get rid of those lines so again really good really really good so bring him up to the top and you, what you'll see here is in, in his old swing that's kind of where the shoulders would stop just because he had a lot less rotation through and let's have a look bring him up to a similar position so 
So you'll see, I'll pause it just before I start. There, look how wide, look how far his hands are away from his head. He's got a little bit of shoulder bend in that right arm, sorry, a little bit of elbow bend in that right arm. That elbow is nice and sort of tucked. It's not flying out, which enables that trail scapula, that trail, trail shoulder to be really stable, which we'll talk about on the downswing. So lovely position there. But what you'll see with Jason, we don't see it in stills, but if I just see this little transition, watch his lower body. Look, he's already, can you see that little move there? Already started to move down as he's starting the backswing. So you'll see this in really good players. What will happen, that rib cage in those, that pelvis will start to move down to create some ground reaction force, some pressure through that lead foot, which allows him then to push back and create some speed. So if you watch face on, watch belt buckle go down, rib cage goes down and left. See that? That's creating loads of stretch, loads of force. That'll also watch the hands. We talked about he doesn't get a lot of wrist set, but that helps him in downswing because there, look, he's increasing that stretch. So what's happening across all these joints is getting some stretch shortening cycle through the wrist joint and then through the mid part of his um, body. So through sort of lead shoulder, through the hips and through the uh, thorax is creating that stretch as he moves down, down. And you can see how athletic that looks. Look at that move, down. Now in the past, we'd see much more of a lateral motion from Jason. He's talked about feeling that at the top of his swing, that left hip moves back, much like in the backswing, how the right hip moves back. That will allow him to clear more because what had happened in the past, he'd get very lateral. So he'd move further left and then he'd get a lot of side bend through the spine, which had caused some compressive forces through the spine and partially or probably, should I say, why he had some injuries through that spine. So we'll bring him down. I mean, that transition movement is so good. Look at that. Bang. Down. Down. That right right hip is moving towards the ball whilst that left hip moves back that's something that you sort of a misconception when we see with early extension that guys don't want to let that right hip move forward but we have to to enable the turn so you see that lag that right elbow's nicely in front of his body probably not as shallow as some guys but it's a it's a matchup, you know, some guys are taught to get the club more shallow like a Rory, but Jason's a little bit taller, more upright swing, so you're going to see less body rotation than a McElroy, but I mean, everything, every guy has their own individual things, a little bit steeper is not a problem, I mean, Tiger's 2000 swing by today's standard, we'd probably say the shaft pitch is a little bit steep, but he matches it up with less, less, um, Rib cage rotation in the downswing, so it's not something that he needs to worry about really. And then you will see here as he comes down this pre delivery position. Look, he's keeping that lag, keeping that lag up. Look at that, it's awesome! It's really loaded. Let's bring him down. That it's a really good checkpoint. This actually in the downswing that that right arm is still got some bend in it you see a lot of amateurs at this point in the downswing that right arm will be really straight feels powerful but you'll see most of the best players in the world will maintain some sort of bend in that right arm as they're coming down which really maintains this lag if you look from face on so down the line we'll bring it down 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 watch where this club is positioned shaft a little bit inside the target line maybe he's probably more than likely I think Jason hits draws here so he'd probably like that position if he was hitting more of a fade he'd want the shaft more in line with this alignment stick on the floor which I'm assuming is why that alignment sticks down just to work on that position that he wants to be a little bit more neutral because his path's probably going to be a little into out from this position but let's bring it down I mean still that's pretty darn good club face is in 
fairly neutral position. Some guys will have it a little bit stronger, some guys a touch weaker. So you probably see a little bit more face uh, forearm rotation just to square it up. Some guys that have a lot of body rotation through the hip will be more that face angle down there. But you'll also see with Jason, a really good checkpoint that I like to see from a biomechanical standpoint is when we get into this pre sort of delivery, you know, it's just skipping the frame here. So I'll just show you from face, from down the line, that we want to see this right elbow and right shoulder sort of in line with each other because a lot of force is put through this trail shoulder when you see this move where that right elbow gets really behind that you see with a lot of amateurs that puts a lot of strain through the right shoulder and it also doesn't enable you to translate the speed from the hands and the shoulder to the club something you'll see guys like Pete Cowan talk a lot about so let's bring him down and then you'll see it impact lovely little bit of shaft lean he's working a lot on getting that lead hit back we look from down the line but just look at that face really nice and stable that hips working really nice and back that's not a position we saw jason in before you see the rib cage is a little bit more rotated jason used to be very very sort of lateral with the hips and would get a lot of tilt and a lot of side bend which would create an enormous amount of compression through the right side of his body probably why he got injured so let's have a look so look at that you won't see, you see a little bit there we go because we th that club face is a little bit more open than some guys you will see look just a touch more face rotation there a little bit more old school than some you can see how those forearms are rolling look at that right arm right hand if you watch that right hand you'll see it just rolling over that's just because of where the face is pre-impact like i say if that face was a little bit more down you probably see a little bit more body rotation and less roll a little bit more of an old school action rather than those get you can see that roll here you know you see a lot of guys sort of trying to hold it off and get more body rotation you'll see head down it's very tiger-esque in a lot of ways head down i'd suggest that jason is left eye dominant because what you'll see with guys that are left eye dominant they don't rotate the head as quickly through the ball tiger's left eye dominant i know that don't know about jason but i'm assuming you'll see more of a head down position yeah head down he'd definitely be left eye dominant be very surprised if not you see that head stays down now i'd suggest for his back pain again probably going to help him if he could get that those eyes a little bit more to the target sooner and um, just because that's probably going to cause a little bit more side bend and a little bit more strain maybe through through his neck just keeping that head down a little bit too long but again it's very difficult if you left eye dominant if you right eye dominant it's a lot easier to get up through the ball and get your head rotating think more stenson or Sorenstam, but you'll see this with guys that are left eye dominant keep that head down but look at that width it's amazing through the ball up onto his left heel loads of width loads of speed i mean he's done a fantastic job with chris como chris is very knowledgeable about the golf swing and biomechanics just love that action a lot more a lot less strain on the body i could say i probably like to see a little bit i mean you can see he's trying to rotate his head through a little bit more like to see a little bit more sort of um, head rotation through that would probably help him out maybe a little bit more um strong club face here a little bit more body rotation could argue that would help him be a bit more consistent but he's pretty darn good pretty darn good lovely looking swing great action great putter and i think he may be a real force to be reckoned with the next few years if he 